So this is what we'll be making in Unreal Engine 5 today. It is a simple toy car that is moving along a spline path. Let's make a new project in Unreal Engine 5. I will select the third person template. I want a larger space so I will select one of these walls and uh, rotate them and uh, resize them. So now I will make the path and uh, before that let's get to know a few things. So what is a timeline? Timelines are special blueprint nodes that keep updating. So this update that you see here or they keep running this update again and again for a time period. In simple words they can be thought of like uh, customized event tick and uh, timelines are very useful for going from value A to value B over a time period. Lerp. So Lerp is a function to linearly interpolate between A and B based on alpha. So it will linearly interpolate between A and B based on this value alpha. In simple words, it's a function to return a value between A and B based on alpha. And uh, this alpha should be between 0 and 1. It can be 0, it can be 1 and it can be any other value in between. And uh, this Lerp node is very useful with timelines. And uh, what is a spline? Well, we are talking about blueprint spline component here. And uh, this blueprint spline component is a path that can be used to move things around in Unreal Engine. It can also be used to place things along a path inside uh, our game. So now let's make our path actor. So I will add a blueprint class here and I will select this actor. I'll call it BP path. Let's open it. Now let's add the spline component. We can click this add button and look for spline. And that is all for our BP path actor. Let's add another actor. So this will be thing that will be moving around. This will also be actor and I will call it BP actor. Let's open it. I will add a simple cube here. Let's also make sure that this cube is on the floor and uh, not in the middle, not in the center. It should be on the floor. If this is on the center, it won't really look very good when we move it uh, with this line. So let's make sure that it is like this. And now we can go to the event graph. And uh, in the begin play, we need to get the spline. So let's use uh, a very quick node. A very useful node here get actor of class. We need to select the class that we use for our path. Let's promote this to variable and I'll call it path. Let's also make a custom event and I will call this uh, start moving. Now we need to also call this custom event after we set the path. Now we need our timeline and the lerp node. Now this lerp node needs these three values and uh, first value we will keep it zero and uh, b will be the length of our spline this alpha will be the value that comes from our timeline so let's go into the timeline by double clicking and this length is the duration for which the timeline will run let's add a float track here this will smoothly give us our alpha value over a time period so i will call it alpha and uh, we will add two keys here so first key the time should be zero and the value should be zero and let's add another key. Here the time will be the length. So if our length is 5, the time will be 5. If our length is anything else, make sure that the time is set here properly. And the value will be 1. And we need to make sure that this timeline is looping because we want to keep our object moving in a loop. If you do not want your object to move in a loop, you should not make it loop.
now we can go back in our event graph and we can connect this alpha here and let's also make sure that the event is connected to play so when this event fires we want to play our timeline let's also get the spline from our path we want to know the length of the spline so this get spline length function is very useful for that let's connect it to b and i will be using these again so i will select a path and spline and i will copy it and let's paste it here now we need a node that is called uh, get transform at distance along spline Let's split this pin. So this node is very useful for getting to know the location and rotation at a particular distance along a spline. And uh, in simple words, this function here smoothly gives us distance along our spline from zero to the length. So when the timeline updates, we want to set the location and rotation of our actor. So let's connect the location and rotation. And this should be from the world coordinate space. So let's select the world coordinate space here. Let's connect our set actor location and rotation node to the update pin. and it is very important to connect this uh, distance here so in simple word this setup here is uh, smoothly giving us the uh, position along our spline from zero till the length of our spline now let's see if it works back in our level i will make a path here We've, so why we will drag and drop the path actor here and uh, we can click on this point and hold the alt key on our keyboard and start dragging to make a new point on the spline i will quickly make a close path here Now let's uh, add our actor again. We'll copy the location of our spline or our path actor. And we'll paste the location to the actor that we want to move. And again, let's uh, get the player start near uh, this line component a bit. So yeah, it is working right now. Now I want to use uh, another mesh instead of this cube. So let's go to the actor blueprint. And uh, I will add a quick cell content here. So here I will look for toy car. I will use the high quality one and I have already downloaded it. I will add it to our project and uh, i will drag and drop the new mesh here it will be in the mega scans folder i will remove the cube and in the viewport we can see that our car is very small we want to increase the scale and uh, to do that let's uh, first click this little lock icon here this will make sure that all of our scales are changed uh, at once so x y and z will, will be changed at once I will say it should be 20 that is looking better and make sure that this object is on the floor and there's one more very important thing let's click this mesh and uh, let's look for hit events in the details panel let's search hit events and uh, 
if possible it is better to keep uh, this off so it is better to not check this and keep this unchecked or keep this false keep this off whatever you say it because uh, sometimes uh, i have observed that when we are using these meshes with splines and uh, moving them according to splines sometimes it affects the performance a lot so if possible it is better to keep the simulation generate state events off So here we have our toy car moving along our spline here in Unreal Engine. Looking very nice to me. I really want to know your feedback about this tutorial that you followed. So please let me know your honest feedback in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and share the video with your fellow game devs. Thank you.